Two quick things before we start. One, spoiler warning, Better Call Saul seasons one through six A. I'm not planning on spoiling anything from the second half of season six, mostly because I'm still processing. Number two, I'm supposed to keep this short. So for all you Better Call Saul fans out there, uh, I'm aware that I am missing a lot of stuff here. This is just the most basic overview. But I mean, if you wanna leave me some angry comments anyway, it's all engagement. Okay, thesis statement. The relationship in Better Call Saul between Jimmy McGill and Kimberly Wexler stands out amongst its contemporaries in its visual portrayal of intimacy. In perhaps the best example of show don't tell that I've ever seen, Better Call Saul uses dozens of visual cues to build a relationship that feels real and evocative and lived in. And today, I just kind of want to celebrate that. All right, if you haven't seen the show, Better Call Saul is a prequel series to the smash hit Breaking Bad, takes place in New Mexico a few years before the events of that show. It charts the transformation of Jimmy McGill, a down on his luck but highly resourceful lawyer and con man into Saul Goodman, the scumbag lawyer who helped Walter White build his meth empire in Breaking Bad. Jimmy begins season one with an antagonistic relationship to his brother's law practice, which denied him a job many years earlier, but he has a very good relationship with one of its lawyers, attorney extraordinaire Kim Wexler. The first time we ever see Jimmy and Kim really interact in the pilot of the show, a furious Jimmy, having been stymied once again by his nemesis, comes storming out of the elevator into the parking garage of the building. There, he finds Kim leaning casually against the concrete wall, smoking a cigarette and almost seeming like she was waiting for him. Jimmy goes to stand next to her and pout. They stand silently, both leaning against the wall, staring into middle distance together. And then Jimmy leans over and he plucks the cigarette out of her mouth so he can take a drag. It's a gesture of immense tenderness and familiarity. This is the first time we've seen these two interact by themselves on screen and already years of closeness and even slight tension are conveyed by a single silent gesture. It's pretty funny to compare this to some of the earliest scenes of Walt and Skylar in Breaking Bad who are shown to be the opposite of intimate. Their marital problems most infamously visually portrayed by that one awful, pitiable hand job. Now, in Breaking Bad, this was the purpose. We are supposed to see Walt as isolated and emasculated to understand his headspace, but I'm glad they didn't go that route here because they easily could have. In Breaking Bad, the character of Saul Goodman is sleazy and fairly unsympathetic, except that he's portrayed by Bob Odenkirk. But at the start of Better Call Saul, Jimmy McGill has a sweetness to him a tenderness that Kim tends to bring out in him. In the fifth episode of season one, Jimmy and Kim have a scene together in the closed nail salon where Jimmy shares an office. This scene is on its surface, mostly expositional. It's a scene where we see Jimmy struggling with his lack of purpose and Kim suggests that he might be good at elder law. And then he receives a phone call about his brother's health. But the way this scene is staged, throughout the scene, Jimmy is giving Kim this amateur pedicure. He has her up in the seat, he's daintily painting her nails, they're joking around. It's fun, it's intimate, it's a flirtation that feels so incredibly well-trodden this early in the show. Like words on a piece of paper that have been written over so many times that the pencil has started to rip through the page. I had to go back and rewatch this scene to even remember what the hell they were talking about, but I remembered the scene for its visuals. For how effortlessly it made me feel like these two kids ought to get together. All right, let's talk about rituals between Jimmy and Kim because there are a lot of them and they are very important to this relationship. The first time we ever see them sleep together in the show, 
Jimmy and Kim wake up the next morning and they brush their teeth together in the bathroom. Jimmy does this cute thing where he uses her finger to, to brush his teeth. It's gross, but, but it's cute. As their relationship progresses and they even start living together, we see this motif of them brushing their teeth together coming up again and again and again. And it just makes the relationship feel really real. There's something so comfortable about it. Like it's conveying visually this sense of, we get each other, we like each other, warts and all. We don't have to pretend. This becomes a point of really interesting internal contrast for these characters who are otherwise pretty performative and insincere. Jimmy is constantly working people, either outright lying to them or using the truth in manipulative ways to get them to do what he wants. There are multiple scenes, for instance, of Jimmy bringing himself to tears, talking about his troubled relationship with his brother and his father, only for us to then learn that he was cynically simulating vulnerability in order to manipulate the person that he was with. Kim, as a woman in a male-dominated space who grew up poor and has everything to prove, it's constantly putting on airs to compete in this cutthroat corporate environment. And she maintains this veneer of professionality even as she cultivates a sense of deep spite toward the haves who always seem to win out over the have-nots. And that's to say nothing of the biggest ritual between Jimmy and Kim early on, which is that they like to commit scams together. They go to bars and they scam rich assholes out of their money for fun, and later for profit and revenge. Fundamentally, they are liars, they are manipulators, even to each other. The pathological way that they learn to tell half-truths to each other in order to avoid being confronted about their shit is really damaging to the fabric of their relationship. And yet this damage makes them cling all the tighter to each other and to these rituals that they've built around themselves, like bricks at the exit of the catacombs. Really, I think they just want so badly to be partners who get up in the morning together and brush their teeth, uncomplicated, and sometimes they get achingly close to manifesting this reality. And that's the whole point of this, right? They lie to each other with their words, and sometimes with the words that they don't say. But they always express their truth in the visuals around these words in what they do together, and how they inhabit space together. The truth that they feel a real, devouring need for one another's company and for the life that only they can give the other person. That they do, in their own way, love each other. That at the end of the day, literally, at least they are together. Cigarette sharing, teeth brushing, bar scamming, beer drinking, each ritual with its own special place in their life. In one of the best openings of any episode of the show, we're taken through a montage of their life together, but it's during a time when they are drifting apart from one another, when their relationship is on the verge of collapse. As we see them going about their day, they are separated down the middle of the screen. Sometimes they're in different locations, but even when they are together, brushing their teeth in the same bathroom that divide remains on the screen. And the relief I felt when they made it work and came back together in season five was only barely matched by the gnawing unease I felt at their increasing codependence. By the time they've gotten married, pulled their terrible season six scheme that ends not well, and finally been forced to face how toxic and codependent they've become, we, the viewers, truly experience the loss of their relationship on such a visceral level. Because we, having watched this show, have just internalized all of these visual cues, all of the little, beautiful, intimate moments between them that have led them to this road, and we're watching them lose all of that. In their breakup scene, Jimmy says, I love you, for the first time. But it doesn't feel like new information, and in fact, it feels desperate, inadequate. One last flailing attempt to use words to mend what actions can't. But he should have known better. 
Words were never how Jimmy and Kim expressed truth to one another or to us. Words are great as pretty lies and quick fix solutions, but they are secondary to small physical acts of love. And if their cornucopia of rituals wasn't enough to preserve their relationship, words were never gonna cut it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I have been Charlie, and for great indie film takes, better call New 32 Productions. So yeah, if you if you be so kind as to like, comment, subscribe, click the bell, the bell icon. And like I said at the top, I had to cut so much out of this just to make it feasible to make. So please comment in this video and let me know all of your favorite Jimmy and Kim moments that I've missed.